Let's come to the second uh, fairy tale in compensation. You know, this uh, Mark Goldman was his name. Uh, he, um, he said, link, you know, link the salary very strong to the performance of the company. In his case, it was stock profits, you know, stock returns, but operating profits is the same thing. It's a widespread assumption that when you link CEO pay to, um, to uh, profits, that uh, this will actually mean higher profits. Um, I brought an example for you. What you see here is sales, EBIT, and uh, a company with six years. You, know, you can only see five of the six years because uh, it's cut off from the projector. Um, now my question to you is, what do you think is the best year for this company? Look, you just have two numbers, just sales, just profits. What do you think is the best year? <laughs> Other opinions? Six has the hard sales and two has the hard sales. So. Yeah. The point I want to make here, I don't walk you through the exercise I do with the students, is we can't agree on financial performance. I mean, typically they say 2002 has a, you know, good growth, good, good margins, so some select 2002. Some say 2003 we have tremendous growth and actually the margin is not that bad. And others again say 2007, which you can't see, which has the highest debit. Uh, unfortunately, can't see. So, and then I typically let them vote. And I don't only do it with students; I do it with board members too. And the amazing thing is, we cannot agree on performance. I typically move then to the next quest question and ask, which one? It's the same numbers. Is is the most valuable company? And then they always pick the one with the highest debit. And then I tell them, okay, when EBIT is the most important number, we should look at growth of EBIT, and that gives me then a new year, 2005, because here EBIT grew the most, uh, Delta EBIT, 160, 000, 160. So we have three or four years out of six years that, are, that people cannot agree on which one is the best year. And that's a huge problem in, in compensation. If you can't agree on the performance metric, if you can't agree that a certain performance uh, metric is, explains the whole situation, then you can't pay a bonus on it. To show you how relevant this is, I found a statement from, uh, from um, a Duke Niederauer, who was CEO of uh, the New York Stock Exchange. And he said, uh, because um, he, he got 1.8 times you know, the average of other CEOs, he said, the board said there, um, the stock price is a very bad metric for performance measurement. So if stock exchanges don't believe in stock prices anymore, <laughs> it's, it's a little bit humoristic, but, but then you see actually how problematic it is to work with financial numbers. The more important thing, though, is a couple of examples. Let's assume you have a company that has two products, A and B. And for these two, you know, one sells 100, one sells 50, one at the margin of 20%, one at the margin of 10%. Combined, it's a margin of 17%. How can you, let's assume you're on the profit margin, you're, you're incentivized on the profit margin, something we before said, you know, could be an interesting metric. How can you increase the profit margin the easiest? Sell less. <laughs> B. Yes, you're right. Sell less of product B. Absolutely. Because you're all CFA <laughs> Institute uh, alumni, you found it out right away. Typically, they say, well, you have to cost, cut the cost here, <laughs> or you have to sell more of A. I mean, this is the honest answer. And this is what everybody believes. If I incentivize here on the margin, of course the margin will go up, and the profit will go up too. But it's not true. It's a motivation to sell less of low pro, uh, profit margin products. And this is not unrealistic. There are many companies that use profit margins in their incentive compensation. And the message it gives, sell less. Does it make sense? I had a company that uh, had a clear growth strategy and only used profits in the compensation. At the end of the year, you know, the board said growth growth target achieved, they were in the 75th percentile in terms of growth, but their profit was still the same as the year before. 
why? It costs something to grow. I mean, if, if you want companies to grow, you cannot just focus on, say, uh, on profits because even, in the long, even if in the long term only bigger companies will have bigger profits, in the short term, which matters, people will act differently. They will focus on the short term gain. What are your thoughts about economic profit? Um, that, would that be, fo you, you could gain that too, I guess? Or yeah, let's look at the, at the fairy tale of economic profit. I learned this when I consulted uh, a company who does glass bottles. What they have is they have big basins where they have the glass. They, they boil the glass or they, they make it really hot and then they need probably concrete basins to, to, to hold the glass and after 20 years the whole concrete is gone. It's just, you know, went into glass. So every 20 years they have to make a big new investment into a new concrete basin. And there I really realized something about economic profit. <laughs> there I could really realize it. You know, this is another example of a company making a profit of 25 each year with an investment that starts at 100, is depreciated towards you know, zero, and then when it's zero, we buy a new investment. What happens to economic profit? Well, your capital decreases with a depreciation, which means your capital charge decreases too. And your economic profit miraculously you know, goes up and up and up until you have to make a reinvestment and it goes back down. Does it make, does it, is that performance, are these years better than the last year? No. These years are all the same because, you know, we just have to buy a new, make a new investment every f four, four, four years, five years. And economic profit, you know, basically has a fundamental problem. You're comparing costs for the future with returns of investments of the past. Your return here comes from the past, from an investment in the past. Your cost comes from an investment in the future. <laughs> it's a fundamental conflict of the period you're looking at. What is the incentive here? To not invest anymore. If, I, if somebody's on an economic profit plan, what I recommend to do is just wait and see. Your economic profit is going to increase. <laughs> Combine that with what we said about profits. The easiest way to improve the profit is to sell less. You know, I mean, to cut costs, basically. So using, using a only profit-based <laughs> metrics, which is really fashionable. A lot of people say it should only be profits. That's the only thing that counts for us actually motivates people to not invest and to not sell. As a matter of fact, when you compare profits to your share price, it gets even worse. It's called your earnings per share. If you compare profits to your share price, what is the biggest incentive to do? Is to buy back shares. Just a week ago in the Financial Times, I read that in the US this year, last year, 500 billion US dollars was bought back from, shares were bought back from the investors. There's no value added. These companies in the US don't believe they can do more with the money than their shareholders. Even worse, the shareholders think they should pay the money back. Yesterday I had a friend from a FTSE 250 company uh, at my house uh, for dinner and uh, to sleep over and he, you know very late at night he told me you know what we're making losses until now now we make a profit you know what comes the first question shareholder ask is when are you going to pay it out and Adam, uh, Andrew Smithers a, a UK analyst even argues that this may be the reason why we have so so much slow growth because of earnings per share based incentives, profit margin based incentives, economic profit based incentives. They all motivate to actually reduce and not to grow. It's a serious problem. Hmm. So my economic profit would motivate you to invest because you want to create value. And if you have a positive spread business, you're going to grow it. 
The problem is actually the time delay. This is really the problem. People don't think so long term. If they would think long term, they wouldn't pay back 500 million US dollars. The investor wouldn't demand it because they would believe in the long term it's best invested with the company because that's their job. Well, you could also say that the, the companies are paying it back instead of they're afraid to invest, they're afraid to increase their, their asset base. Why are they afraid? Maybe for political reasons, for tax reasons. Mm -hmm. But they're strongly motivated to pay back because of earnings based you said it, you compensation. Said the CEO wasn't greedy. Yeah, but still, it, I, I said yeah. you don't have to be greedy to be rational. You know, it doesn't, I mean. No, I, I disagree. I think if he's paying it back, he's being greedy because he's being short sighted. No, I don't think so. Now, greed is for me uh, kind of maximize my profit. Well, that's what he's doing by buying back shares. No, it's, that's what the shareholders want from him. It's a rational thing to do. When, when shareholders want more profit? No, everybody knows if you have a positive spread business and you can grow, it's great for the share price. That's just, that's just it's very idealistic. That's my belief. It's very idealistic. I think yeah. when you want companies to grow, you have to incentivize them on growth. And hardly anybody does that. So when I, when I conclude, basically, you know, this.